Hey everybody, this is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle, and uh, I just wanted to say hello and give you a report from Seattle, which is kind of rock and roll city, and you know, there's always something going on, of course, uh, and people are talking about all sorts of stuff on on YouTube and other social media. And thank you to Pearl Jam for stepping out and making some political statements lately, which I really appreciate. You can usually count on those guys to be outspoken um, and activist-oriented, which is always cool. That definitely... Uh, fits with the ethic of Seattle and the history of demonstrations against the World Trade Organization and better known as the Battle in Seattle, which I wrote a song about, um, called The Ballad of N30 or um, The Battle in Seattle is what most people call that song. That's what it's known as. Um, you can also find it as The Ballad of N30, which is kind of like the subtitle, but that's my song about Jenny had a beautiful face But she went out of place, so she went downtown Because she heard the sound Parades and banners everywhere Someone put a flower in her head, so she marched along Singing protest songs it's, a, it's about what happened on the streets that day When the police tried to take her sign She'd made a choice to hold the line And when the tear gas started to flow She felt the power of the people grow when they said you can use your gas and your pepper spray that nobody is gonna go away and that's when they said you can call this a no protest zone but these are our streets and this is our home and if you are the WTO then get out of the way well, that's a rough version of it, of course. On uh, a little martial amp here, but uh, yeah. So Seattle has an activism um, history, of course. The Occupy movement was big here, and Occupy Wall Street, and so there were major encampments in downtown that went on for months. And there was a major one at Westlake, Westlake Park in downtown, right in the middle of the commercial district. And uh, that went on for a long time, and you know the police would keep raiding these encampments, these occupations, and uh, I think like 36 people got arrested one night, and you know they would harass people by shining uh, spotlights onto them all night long, and just turning on their sirens all the time and trying to harass them. Um, but eventually, I think the Downtown Business Association and the Chamber of Commerce or whatever probably told the mayor and the police, you got to get out of there. I remember the mayor at the time, Greg Nichols, was telling me uh, I shook his hand while he was on camera on a local TV newscast. And he, I said, thank you for coming down to see the, the occupation. And he told me off camera, so I shook my hand really hard and said, Mark, you got to get these people out of here. Like bring him down to City Hall and I'll try to protect them. I was like, whoa, what is going on? He was, seemed to be under a lot of stress. Well, yeah, within a very short period, the police raided it. Some people wanted to go to the City Hall uh, where there were some facilities and later City Hall did become a shelter for people who needed shelter at night. Um, right in the lobby of the City Hall, they would just let people throw down their um, uh, backpacks and sleeping bags or whatever and sleep. So, um, at that time, they were offering uh, an area outside the city hall where people could t camp in their tents and things. 
but uh, there was a whole big chaotic thing with the General Assembly, which is what you call the big meetings at night at, during the Occupy Movement General Assemblies. And uh, somebody, you know, there was sort of a consensus that was met to go ahead and go to City Hall, and then another group of people kind of came back after the General Assembly had mostly disbanded and called another one and, you know, said that they superseded the one before, so he got very uh, political. And um, in any case, the deputy mayor came back downtown to see what the decision was, and he got a no answer after people telling them yes, so they were very confused. And so then the, that occupation moved up to Se Seattle Central College, which is called Seattle Cent uh yeah, it is Seattle Central College um, on Capitol Hill, uh, and there at the time there was no state um, law prohibiting camping on a state college, so people just started camping there, and that's what happened. And then after weeks and weeks of that, the president of the college went to court and got a judge to um, force them out on some provisional law or something. And so, most people don't know this story, but m most of the occupiers in Seattle, the Occupy Wall Street group, the, it was called Occupy Seattle, they went a couple blocks away to an abandoned warehouse and were able to set up an encampment there. But the police raided them that same night at about 3 o'clock in the morning. They pushed all the reporters like blocks away so nobody could see what was going on. But you know, people were smelling the tear gas or pepper spray or whatever it was. So I remember calling the Seattle Times and saying, you know, they're the SWAT team or whatever is, you know, commandeered fire trucks and they've got the ladder truck down here and they're up on top of the building breaking through with assault weapons and things, you know, to get these Occupy people. I'm like, are you aware of any of anything, you know, any like violent crimes that have happened or any reason why they would be doing that? And they said no and that they didn't have a reporter available, but, you know, to contact them if, you know, there were arrests. So, I don't know. It got good coverage from the Capitol Hill blog, which always does great stuff, you know, on, on local events like that. But uh, the real story was never told. Those people all got arrested that night in a, with a very traumatic series of arrests uh, where the police literally commandeered fire trucks from the Seattle Fire Department, climbed up on top of the roof of the ladder trucks, broke through, swooped down on them, uh, once again arrested like 36 people or something like that. Later, Judge Judith Hightower threw out all of those arrests um, saying that it, they had squatters rights, that nobody actually, that, that the, the ownership of that building was in question actually at that time and nobody knew what was happening to it and it was scheduled to be demolished very soon. So she literally dropped all their charges. So all of those people were never charged with anything even though they were subjected to these terrible uh, SWAT team kind of thing. So that's part of the history of activism in Seattle. And then of course the Black Lives Matter protests and you know all I can do is speak from my experience during these times and having done some journalism and talked to other people but um, the Black Lives Matter movement I was there all the time and um, got tear gassed and pepper sprayed and shot with you know rubber bullets and all sorts of crazy things and tear gas canisters were landing right next to me concussion grenades going off right next to my head just crazy stuff so um and sometimes you know it felt like the press was being targeted just as much as the activists at times so it was kind of scary whether you had a press badge or not on didn't matter you know if you were in the front of the line you're trying to take a picture or you even you were had a camera or whatever it didn't matter still were subjected to those crowd control um, munitions, as they call them. So, and, you know, this goes back to the Vietnam War days when there were major demonstrations in, in Seattle as well. There were major demonstrations here on the night that um, uh, Donald Trump got elected and during the inauguration. So, you know, it's got a history of that, and so it's good to see bands like Pearl Jam stepping out and speaking out. And they actually had a very positive thing to say as well, which I, I like. Um, and, you know, Brian May from Queen, one of my favorite guitar players of all time, as I said on the Josh Santo show earlier today, who was also influenced a lot by Jimi Hendrix, like me, our, our Seattle guy, Seattle 
guitarist. Um, but um, Pearl Jam had this interesting thing to say. Uh, we are a remarkable, remarkable species capable of creating beauty, capable of awe-inspiring advancements. So he's appealing to, uh, or they're appealing to, the band is appealing to uh, people's higher nature there. And I, I like that. I'm, I like that it's bringing people together, it's bringing musicians together who haven't been very political or spoken out much on issues like this. You know, Paul Stanley from KISS or whatever, which, you know, we were laughing at the other day because he put out a list of um, world's best vocalists or something like that. His favorite, his who he thought were the world's best vocalists, or something like that. And his first list uh, included only one woman, which was Ann Wilson of Seattle Heart, um, the Heart Band fame, and who's still rocking today, man. I mean, she just released an album called uh, Fierce Bliss, and it looks like the cover art has been done by Roger Dean, the guy that used to do the artwork for, you know, Yes and Asian, and you know, really great artist, really mythical kind of artist but mystical kind of mythical artist but um she was on that list but all the rest of them were white rocker dudes and so i you know i don't know whether she was talking about it or not or if other people were talking about it i guess it was ann wilson actually who kind of posted the paul stanley list and then other people started reacting to it like me and then i reacted to paul stanley and i said i replied on twitter and said you know hey what's up with this list you know where are the women where are the people of color so of course then he immediately released another list and um he probably got heat from other people as well um and that included you know ray charles and aretha franklin and you know some really great people and more women of course so he caught himself but but people have bias you know and it's it's sad to see that that sometimes but uh I mean, man, I've been influenced by a lot of black musicians, so I can't I can't leave them off my list. But anyway, uh, musicians from all over the world, all over the planet, um, and then also a lot of uh, Seattle musicians have influenced me. But as I said, Queen is, of course, as well, and Brian May. It's really great to see him speaking out. Um, you know, Green Day canceled their upcoming performances because of this stuff that's been going on so I mean you know uh, people are coming together in ways that I haven't seen before um, and it's good to see uh, once again I you know wish I we had seen this you know during other atrocities and genocides you know especially in Africa and other places <sighs> did I say that yes I did and I, I'm not saying I'm just saying as they would as they say in New York other parts of the world, the global south, that just don't get as much attention, have also suffered greatly, both um, from colonial wars and then late, and later wars of empire and, and economic empires. So we all know that, and a lot of times, even though I'm a journalist, you know, executive director for Democracy Watch News, by the way, democracywatchnews.org, um, uh, we all know that there's bias in the media and the way that governments and uh, corporations bring you the news. So every um, country has its own bias and every news agency has their own bias. So don't let them tell you they don't. They will claim they don't, but it's almost impossible uh, not to have bias as a human being. So. <laughs> For instance, I love all kinds of music, um, uh, but I am biased uh, in favor of rock and roll and blues and jazz. So, you know, I like other kinds of music, but I'm, I feel more natural doing um, the rock stuff. Anyway. I just wanted to say hi to you all today and give you a shout out from Seattle about what's been going on here. The BBC uh, World Service Arts Hour broadcast from here was really great with, you know, Eva Walker curating that, um, the brilliant lead singer from the Black Tones and guitarist, and her brother Cedric was there too, and he's the drummer, and uh, Hugh, Marshall Hugh 
from um, the martial law band mm. and all those people really great Hollis it was great hanging out and seeing all that happen and it's been a very busy time but it was good to see that and I hope you all are doing okay and thanks for checking in uh, to my channel and the MTC report uh, sometimes I just like to do little videos like this um, but once again thanks to Pearl Jam and you know Brian May and other bands and artists who have been speaking out lately and you know I would appreciate seeing more bands and, and artists being socially conscious and speaking out about things in their music because I think it's really important to do that and there was a time of course in the late 60s early 70s when a lot of the top selling bands were actually the most most political in the United States so uh, we know that happens um, but it would be good to see more of that because there are other issues too going on in the world and in this country that need to be addressed by artists I think so and it's always you know art is a good way uh, it's a good way of uh, addressing issues in a way that you can't necessarily with journalism or academic science or you know um, typical media journalism so <laughs> This is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle. Thanks for tuning in to the MTC Report. As, a, as always, subscribe, like the video, share it, hit that little bell so that you can get a notice when I put out another one. And uh, you can always listen to me on the Jeff Santa Show every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time, uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time at revolutionradionetwork.com. It's a great talk show, the best in the country as far as I'm concerned. And Jeff is a great guy and a good friend. So... You can also hear me a couple times a month on the on the Tom Hartman program. He's also a f good friend, good guy, um, great progressive media guy. And then um, the professor is what some people call him, although he does not have that kind of a degree. Um, figuratively, he's the professor. He's a very learned man um, and one of my influences as well. But... Thank you to the Black Tones and Shana Shepard for doing such great music in Seattle and you know, bringing that authenticity to the music scene. Thank you for speaking out um, and being there as vital members of the important, uh, supportive members of the community. Thank you for being there. And um, this is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report from Seattle. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>